welcome to my channel, Sova to Makery. I'm Catherine and welcome to my channel. So I must start this video by welcoming everybody that has recently subscribed to my channel. Honestly, I am overwhelmed by how many people have subscribed in this last week. And I think I have a very big thank you to say to Claire from lovely Stitch Hem So. And um, I think lots of people have come over from her channel. So thank you so much. And thank you, Claire, once again for doing our collaboration. It was such a joy. And also, um, welcome to anybody that has come over to my channel after watching the um, videos from a gift to November. Um, I've had such a lovely response to the video that I did with a little tutorial with the um, towel and the bond web and the letters. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for all those lovely comments and welcome if you have come over and decided to subscribe to my channel after watching that video. You are very welcome here and welcome back to all my lovely subscribers. It's a joy to have you here as always. Right, so today I've got a video which I have not done before and I'm hoping that I can do it well. If I do leave anything out, please leave comments down below. I absolutely love having chats with you down in the comments. So yeah, if I do leave anything out or if there's any questions you've got, please do ask me because I really enjoy answering them. So yeah, today I'm going to do a little pattern review and the pattern review I'm going to do is for the top I'm actually wearing. So I am wearing a honey blouse by Fibre Mood Patterns. Now I will stand up and just show it to you um, a little bit, but I will also pop in lots of pictures as I'm talking so that you can, um, yeah, see what I'm talking about. So when I talk about particular details and things, but yeah, this is the Fibre Mood um, Honey Blouse. It's got this lovely, um, ruffly collar. As you can tell, it's all about the collars recently. <laughs> what with my Bakerloo dress and now this one. Yeah, it's got this lovely collar with this ruffle detail. Um, at the back, it's got a yoke and then a gathered um, back that goes into the yoke. And it's got these wonderful um, tie um, at the end of the sleeves. And yeah, and then I did um, little self-covered buttons. So yeah, it's got five buttons down the front. But yeah. So, right, I'm going to try and go through step by step of the pattern so that hopefully if you are interested in this pattern and potentially we're going to make it, um, it gives you lots of information so that you can make the decision whether you do want to make it or don't want to make it. Um, but equally so that I can share some of the parts that maybe I found a bit tricky or maybe the bits that I really enjoyed or that I changed. So, yeah, if there is anything else, though, that you do have questions about, please do ask. Right. So let me start by what size I made. So I made a size 10 or a 38 according to Fibre Move Patterns. And the measurements that came up for this size are a 34 and a half on the bust and then a 38 inch on the hip. They actually do their patterns in centimetres, which is an 88 centimetre bust and a 97 centimetre hip. That means absolutely nothing to me. <laughs> I don't know about anybody else, but I completely work in inches when it comes to measurements in dressmaking. So yeah, I did quickly transfer, uh, not translate, the translate, I don't know, the word, uh, change it from centimetres into hips so that I could tell you guys, because I thought I'm going to have no idea. And you guys probably might be thinking, huh, centimetres? No, no, we work in inches. Um, so yeah, so yeah, it was 34.5, uh, inch bust and 38 inch hip but the pattern size does go up to oh and actually I'll start from where it starts and I will put where it ends so they go from a size 4 up to a size 30 and what I'll do is I'll put the information for the hips and the bust measurements for those minimum and maximum size range that they have down below so that you can just see it quickly. Um, so yeah, it's got a relatively good size range. It's not as good as some of the independent patterns like Friday Pattern Company, but it's not as stingy as say some of the uh, big four patterns. So yeah, it has got a relatively good size range. Um, so, and I made it in this absolutely gorgeous fabric. I bought this fabric with a voucher that Kirsty's mum and dad bought me for my birthday in March and um, it is a gorgeous visco sateen which is called I wrote it down cloud flower you can see why it's called cloud flower actually they look like little flowers that are made of clouds don't they uh, and it's from fabric godmother and it's absolutely gorgeous it was not the easiest fabric to work with I must admit um, it is extremely drapey 
and quite slinky because I don't know if you can see but it's got sort of a sheen to it, a slight sheen. I mean it's not a sheen like a satin would be, like really slippery shiny um, but it has got a little sheen which means it is quite slippery to work with and I did find that I caught it a couple of times. Um, I don't can't remember where, I think it might have been on one of the yokes um and yeah it does pull very easily so i used um really fine pins actually i'll show them to you hold on give me a second <laughs> uh jump up and show you i got these uh lovely fine pins that i got and they're glass headed and i bought those from make at 140 and they were really good i think they were prim but i'll see if i can find them on her website and um show you but they were really good and very very good for delicate fabrics like this and then i also used a fine microtex needle um because yeah i was terrified about um the pulls and yeah i still did get a couple it was definitely a more challenging fabric to work with but the end result i think is lovely and i absolutely love the color right so what i'm going to do is go through um the process of making it and um anything that i came across that i found tricky and how I think it comes up size wise and any adjustments that I made or need to make. Right, so let me start with where the inspiration for this top came. I watch, um, it used to be on a Sunday night and now it's on a Monday night, uh, the lovely Lauren Guthrie from Guthrie and Garney. She does an Instagram live, which I'm sure loads of you watch and I absolutely love it. So she gets loads of questions in and then she'll answer them and she'll show fabrics and she'll talk about patterns. And in one of those Instagram lives that she did, um, she was wearing the Fibre Mood honey blouse. And when I saw her blouse, I just thought, oh, that looks perfect. It's a lovely top that you can wear, pair with jeans. Um, you could possibly wear it under like a dungaree dress I think with the collar and the sleeves poking out um and yeah I just saw her blouse and I thought I really like wearing blouses and I don't have that many in my wardrobe when I saw hers, I thought I, I need to make one of these. So a little while ago, Fibre Mood, I can't remember what it was. I feel like it was at the beginning of the year. They did a sale where you could get five of their patterns for 20 euros. So I hopped on it and I bought that one, the Ermine and a few others. Um, and yeah, I bought that in the sale. So actually it was only four euros for the pattern, which I think is quite a bargain for Fibre Mood. Um, and yeah, I was... Yeah, so when I was going to talk about when you buy the patterns off Fibre Mood, so I had one of my lovely viewers, um, Margaret, hello Margaret, um, she emailed me, um, she was having a bit of a problem with the collar and she was finding that it wasn't the shape that it looked like on lots of other people and um, she emailed me and showed me the pattern piece that she got and then we had a chat about it. Now Fibre Mood, when you buy their patterns from their website, you can get their instructions off their website for free, but you have to purchase the pattern. When you do, you get two copies of the pattern. You get one copy of the pattern, which is, has got all the lines on for cutting and the seam allowance is included. And I think they write on there that it is the SA only AO copy. And then you get another copy of the pattern, which has the cutting lines and the seam allowance lines drawn on it. So it's the cutting lines and then the seam allowance shows you where you're stitching effectively, which means then you have two lines for each pattern piece um, for each size. And Margaret showed me the piece, the pattern that she'd got, which is the, when you get it through Fibre Mood, it's the S-A-A-O copy. So it doesn't have the only bit in it. Um, and you can see, what I'm going to do is show you the two uh, different pictures of one of the pattern pieces. And it you can see how mad the lines are on the one where it has the cutting and the seam allowance or the stitching lines on it. Um, and yeah, it's really, really hard to see where you're, line for cutting is especially on say the little bits like the collar and margaret had a real problem with this um and i said to her she actually bought her patterns from the fo fold line and the fold line it seems only send out the version with all the lines on it so the stitching and the um cutting lines so yeah, it was very confusing for her. So I've sent her the collar pattern and the collar stand pattern um with the out the stick uh stitching line so that within the seam, the seam allowance bit um because i think it makes it way less confusing and i'll show you those pictures just so you can get an idea but um yeah so i would recommend um if you have bought patterns i don't know maybe the fold line could maybe send you both copies i don't know whether that's an option um but equally 
when you buy them from Fibre Mood, they send you both copies anyway. So they send you one with the cutting and stitching lines with the seam allowance included, and then they send you one with just the cutting lines. So I would always print that one if it was you, me. Um, but anyway, so I just keep that, put that in here just in case somebody else is going to get the pattern and is maybe a bit confused about those. If I haven't made that clear, just message me. <laughs> Right, now let's go on to the different parts of the pattern. Excuse my dog outside. Hold on. Sorry about that. I'm back. <laughs> my dog. Love him. We absolutely love our Twizzler, but I think he might be going slightly deaf. Um, and if he hears <laughs> any slight sound, which I think actually is not a sound very much, <laughs> he goes absolutely mad. <laughs> so yeah, and he doesn't like cats and we have a cat that comes to my garden and that might have been it too. So yeah, sorry for any cat lovers there. I love cats. Twizzler does not. <laughs> but anyway, back to where uh, what I was talking about. What was I talking about? I think I was going to go through the different parts of the pattern when you make it. So when you make this pattern, you start off by um, putting the shoulders together and then you um, use a very clever method where you actually include the yoke is lined on the in on the inside and it means you enclose all the raw edges from the bottom of the top and the shoulders in and what I'll do is I'll try and include a picture here of what it looks like on the inside and it's actually really pretty um, and I did put a little label in a Kylie and the machine one that says handmade and I'll make sure I put that on and um, yeah I thought that was a really lovely detail actually I've not done a yoke on a top like that before and it was lovely that the way you enclose all the raw edges um, and yeah I just thought it has a lovely neat finish on the inside then you go on to folding over the button placket and you sort of do a clever fold over so that this all ends up enclosed and I actually used um, a knit interfacing I don't know whether you can see it on there on my top and um, sorry if you can see my lovely thermal vest underneath <laughs> um, yeah I used a knit interfacing and this I can't remember who I saw or heard it from but I thought it was a brilliant tip so if you use a lightweight knit interfacing on uh, very delicate sort of drapey fabrics it gives a lovely soft feel for the um, bits that you've interfaced um, like I've interfaced this and it's still really really um, drapey and lovely but it just gives it that little bit of stability so when you're doing your buttonholes and sewing on buttons and things that it's still got a bit more structure but yeah that was a really handy tip I can't remember where I got it from that's really annoying because I really want to credit where I got it from if I do remember I will write it but um yeah great tip for when you're working with viscose use a knit interfacing uh, yeah, it just gives that little bit of stability um, because obviously it becomes woven once you've ironed it on because it's on a woven fabric, but it's just not as thick as some of the um, woven interfacings. So yeah, that was one tip. Then we went on to the sleeves and the sleeves are lovely. They are just set in um, and then they have this gorgeous detail um, and it's sort of a keyhole opening here. Not keyhole, I don't know, keyhole, I don't know. It has this little slit um, up there and you literally cut the sleeve I was slightly terrified about this and then you put this little bit of um see if I can show it bias on the edge of it now I've not done that before and actually it was relatively simple the instructions were great on that and um yeah I was yeah relatively impressed about how that went and then you sew or you gather in on here and then you sew on these lovely dong ties. And I actually, on mine, hand-stitched the um, inside of the tie down. You're meant to top-stitch all the way around these bits. Um, but I decided that actually wouldn't look that nice. And I'm really glad I did. I just hand-stitched it all the way down. So just catch-stitched it, slip-stitched it. Um, and I think that was a nicer finish. So yeah, that I did do that on my sleeve. Um, otherwise... Yeah, I think it wouldn't look quite so delicate if you'd had to top stitch all the way around the tie. Um, what have I just thought? Oh yeah, I didn't talk about the collar. Um, so the collar, um, it was relatively easy to put in. I found it quite fiddly with the collar stand, I think because of the fabric. I think if maybe I was making it in just a viscose lawn, it would have been slightly easier. I think it's just this one's quite slippery and quite tricky to work with. One thing I did find was though, on the pattern, they don't mention about where this bit is gathered into the sleeve, into the collar. This gather here, they don't mention that actually you need to leave a centimetre gap at the end of your collar where you've gathered it in so that you can actually put your collar into the collar stand. 
they don't mention that in the pattern so the seam allowance is one centimeter for the whole thing um but yeah they don't mention that actually you need to keep this gathered section on the collar a centimeter away from the raw edge of this piece of the collar so that when you put it into the collar stand this bit and this edge doesn't get caught um, and I thought actually that was a bit of a tricky thing in the instructions and I actually made the mistake and didn't leave that centimetre so I had to unpick I was only on one side actually I think one side I'd, I'd done it and one side I hadn't I thought I'd experiment um, so I had to unpick one of them and then pull the gathers back a little bit and then stitch it up and then put the collar in the collar stand so yeah that would be one thing I would uh, say is not very clear on the instructions they don't write it in they put it in the picture but they don't actually write in you must leave a centimeter gap and I think actually they should mention that um what else oh yeah I made some little lovely self cover buttons that I um they were just little metal ones and I covered those. I did those in my lovely little sewing session with my friend Alex. Uh, Alex and I were having a good old natter and putting the world to rights. And um, yeah, I did my self colour buttons. And actually they were really quite easy to do. I just did the method where you cut a circle that's roughly double the width of your diameter of your button. Then I did some little gathering stitches, pulled it in, sort of caught the fabric in the teeth and pushed down the back of the button. Um, and yeah, that worked really well. I was really quite pleased with it. So yeah, is there anything else that I need to tell you? I think I've gone over most parts of the pattern. I made this pattern up technically size-wise for my hips. I should have gone up a size, but where this ends on me doesn't really go over my hips. Um, and you'll see that in the pictures too. I think if you were taller, then, well, I'm only five foot and half an inch, and this hits me, well, I'm wearing high-waisted jeans, and I'd say it hits me about two and a half, three inches below the waist of my jeans. So I'd say if you were, I'm only five foot and a half an inch, as I've said, I think if you were anything over five foot four, five, you might want to lengthen it slightly, unless you want it quite cropped. Um, but yeah, I'm quite pleased with the length. Yeah, as I said, it comes just below my um, high-waisted jeans. Um, so yeah, that would be something to possibly look into if you're taller. Um, what else? Oh, I think I need to make an adjustment for next time. I feel like these shoulders are slooping a bit too far down. I feel like this top needs to just come in just a little bit like this had a look on the pattern and I thought oh is it meant to be slightly dropped but no it is meant to sit so I think I just need to take maybe a couple of centimeters off so that that is sitting on my shoulder at the moment it's just pulling down so I think for next time I make this blouse I will definitely do a little narrow shoulder adjustment um but otherwise I think for the next time I make it everything is fine on it and yeah I'm really 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 pleased with it so I'd highly recommend giving it a go um I intended to make this top for my son's birthday party which was back in the middle of October then I thought well I missed that one didn't manage to get it made for that I'll try and make it for my mum's birthday that was a little bit later in October I missed that as well and I've only just finished it <laughs> And we're nearly in the middle of November. But sometimes that's just how it goes, um, isn't it? Like you have these plans to make something and it doesn't always work out. But I'm glad I took the time and I've eventually finished this. And I'm sure I will get use out of this um, coming into Christmassy party season when it's nice to have a lovely blouse to wear. So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed that review. Um, let me know if there's anything that I've missed out and that you would like to hear. If you've enjoyed the video, please give me a lovely thumbs up. And if you are not subscribed to my channel, please consider subscribing. It would be wonderful to have you on my little sewing adventures and you can join in all the sewing fun. So I will be back with you soon. I'm not sure what I've got planned for my next video, but I'm sure I'll be back soon with some sewing natter <laughs> or something to do with sewing. <laughs> I hope you're all really well. Happy sewing and I will see you all soon. Bye. Mwah.